Hey guys, one legged trapper here. I've been working on the garage a little bit, doesn't look like it, but it's cleaner than it was. So I can actually see my, my bench tops. Uh, but we're, no, we're in here. We're gonna work on skinning a uh, mink out. I already did one, and then it was a second thought of like, oh, I should do I should do a video on these. Uh, this is the last one Jay brought up to me. Um, I think he's got another shipment of them. I think he's gonna clean out his other freezer, and so we'll be working on some of Flair's coyotes that he caught off of that ranch over there in Nebraska. So we'll see what's up, what he brings me. But uh, right now we're gonna go do a rough overview on how I skin musk or muskrat, mink. Pretty close to the same thing. Um, you just actually have to do the tail on the mink. So, all right, well, we'll get you going. This one's pretty good colors. It's got good white throat patches and everything on it. Um, the last one I did was all brown. Like I said, this was an afterthought me recording, but yeah, see there's the, there's the nose, no brown spots on the belly, so, or white spots, but again, all right, we're going to get you guys set up. I don't have a camera. Kids are inside watching TV, being lazy bums. Can't blame them, that's where I've been at most of the day. So there's my camera holder, just two nails in my, uh, I use this, uh, wall here uh, I'm gonna have to cut that out but I use that piece of plywood there and I can usually get two beaver on there at a time so I just nail them up on the wall so I don't have to worry about floor space and holding on to shit but uh, all right I'm gonna get you guys set up here you guys are gonna have a kind of a downward angle There you go. That should get you everything I'm looking at. I got a raccoon in this bag here. Kind of keep them in the bag as they're thawing out because I've been having, as warm as it was the last couple days, I've been having issues with flies. So just lay them out. Yeah, this one's got quite a few white spots. It's got white all the way down past the junk. And that's pretty neat. But uh, yeah, obviously a male. Now when you're skinning them out, they're just like uh, skunks. On either side of the vent tube here, or the anus, there is a gland. I'd rather smell a skunk than a mink. That's my preference, so. So, let me get gloved up and we'll get started. It's a really musky smell. Uh, I don't know why they don't, why they call muskrats muskrats, but mink smell a lot worse. Getting them started because they have such small feet and legs, kind of a pain in the butt. But I'm just going to do a basic trapper's cutout here. Um, the way I do them is I start on the inside of this ankle here, poke a hole somewhere, and then you just zip them from one leg to another. Don't lose your hole. I'm going to go on the upside of the testicles here. And a straight line all the way across and then you flip them up grab them by the tail roll the tail like that and you put a dent right there and you work your way up to that first incision now again this is a trapper's quality so all you taxidermists don't worry about it I know I got a buddy who's a taxidermist and It's a whole different process skinning for taxidermy versus skinning for the market. So I left my good knife sharpener at the taxidermist house. But you want something, I like these old timer, these old timer skinning blades. I've got, I usually keep about three or four. This one I found 
I don't know if it was some old timers old trap knife, but the handle was rotted out on it, old wood handle. We ended up putting a deer antler on there. And that thing, I love using that thing. But if you can tell, it's got a little more wear on it. it doesn't have quite as curved of a blade as the other one does. This one's a lot older and got used a lot. This thing skinned a lot of critters. The next one. This thing skinned deer. It skinned just about everything that Iowa has to offer. But once you get it going, for the most part, you get that hide separated from the meat. A lot of it you could do with just your fingers. But the trick is just getting it started. And once you get your thumb all the way through it, you grab and pull. Just pull it up, get it just past that knee joint. That's it, pop it loose. Peel it back a little bit more. We're just trying to get this ready and then we'll go put it on my gambit that's back here. And then, uh, I don't know if that's exactly what it's called. I think it is. With the hanger upper. And then you'll have to bear with me while I'm doing that because I don't have, again, I don't have any... I'll have to readjust the camera and I'll try to keep you guys running 100% if I can just so you know it goes a little faster if you're not talking and doing introductions and stuff but you want your knife sharp but I don't like it super sharp just because of the hole factor alright And for you guys that are getting new into trapping and or done it for a few years but thinking that there's no market value on shit, there is market value on just about everything. It's just you got to figure out what people are buying. You could take a $6 pelt and turn it into a $25 critter with a little bit of work just by simple little parts you pull off. You Take the head, bleach it out, clean it out, there's 10 bucks. My math might be off, but... Take this here, you guys know what that is. As much as you might not think so. There is a value for a mink pecker. Just like there's a value for coon peckers. Save them all. Alright, now that we're up past that... We're ready to go put it on the on the jig gear. You want to get it pretty close. I mean, heck, we could do most of the skin from here, but I want to hang it up. So we're gonna get you guys readjusted so you can kind of see. Pretty close. <clears throat> Might zoom you in a little bit. No, I'll leave it there. No, it's okay. If I zoom in too close, you won't be able to see. Alright. This is just something I made up a few years ago. Just hangs there pretty good now guys introduced you this is my tail stripper that I'm using until I find my real tail stripper you can use a real tail stripper it works great um, there's a million of them out there on the market but for me I had these this stock and my boy was uh, wanting to uh, practice his welds so 
just make it you can squeeze this in and I put it between the tail between my fingers like that and I grab the bar and then, oh, I pulled the whole tail off and then you just want to work it yeah see I popped the whole tail off that's okay we can still work that come over here to my other one that's supposed to be for the other leg put that tail right in there let me try it all over again and it pulls right out see how easy that works and then later on we'll split that I'm so sorry for this guys, you guys are probably going to get sick of shit watching this one. Alright, I didn't notice that fell. But yeah, that's about it right there. We we'll grab our knife. And just kind of work on getting just a little bit of this loose fat and meat off. And keep it on the carcass and then it's just grabbing either side. You just pull. Keep pulling. Once you get there, you can grab it with two hands and just kind of work your way. Work through the armpits. Like I said, the less you could use a knife, the less chance you have of poking holes. All right, you get them right there to those first ankle pieces where the wrist comes in. And the way I do them, again, we're not doing taxidermy quality, this is trapping quality. Come in here, just put your knife in there, pop them loose. And now we're down to the head. Now mink are a little bit different and a lot of the other critters. Most of the other critters, we're looking at the head here, the ears are here and here. All right, on, located on the top. Minks are located on the side. So if we turn this around, here's center of the head, top center. We turn that around, the mink's ears are right here. Okay, they're right behind the eyes. So, you cut through there, And I know in one of my other videos I say you can cut a hole in them so you have something to hold on to. That don't work on mink and muskrat. So, you just keep working your way around. There she is. My dog just showed up. I don't think she smelt one of these yet. I only caught one in a couple years. So yeah, just keep working your way down and around. Get past some eyeballs. Now where you're going to have some problems at on these is that lower jaw because the way the teeth come in and they just kind of lock in together well they lock the fur in there so you're going to have an issue getting around them lower jaws but I don't usually keep the lower jaw on um, so again just get in there now that we're at the jaws you can stick your finger through the mouth portion and just keep on going now all we got left is that little white patch. I might keep it on this one just because it's white. But plain and simple. That's all she wrote. Now, like I said, you can turn that mink skull into 10 bucks if you're willing to do the work. I've already got all my coffee cans full of uh, heads. Mostly bobcat heads right now. Um, 
I don't know how you guys do yours, but I don't boil mine. I do what they call maceration, which is I just let them sit in a bucket and rot. So all the meat's off the skull, hit it with a pressure washer, and it's good to go. But you got to let them sit for a while and deal with the stink. Yeah, there you go. Good white spots. We're going to get this thing put up. Um, now, I know on some of them we do fur in, fur out. I believe... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe mink are fur in. So you only put them on the stretcher, and once you get them on the stretcher, that's when you do most of your, your fleshing. At least when I do most of my fleshing is on the stretcher. So, but since these are going in the tan, I might just salt them. But, uh, yep, so the next step, split the tail, clean up most of that. Now, mink hide is pretty thick. Um... But you'd still want to keep some, but I don't think you need to keep that much. It's not quite like a muskrat, because that's a lot. They got a lot more meat on their hide than a muskrat or even a bobcat does. So you're going to want to get as much of that off and get this pelt as clean as possible. So, but, uh, yeah, putting them up simple. Again, there's, I don't have, I'm not going to do that for you guys today, but uh, I just wanted to show you the skinning process um, and how little you use the knife. Use it at the beginning and use it at the end. So, we're going to work on fleshing those two out and then we'll be good to go. So, um, yeah, just a little insight. I've been talking with Trapper Jay and we're going to do another swap out. I'm going to get all these ones wrapped up, get them back to him. And then uh, we'll get... Uh, <clears throat> another shipment i think of a lot of coyotes and uh i'm not sure what else we got but um yeah he's working on cleaning out his freezers getting ready for this trapping season coming up i think their season starts november 15th um but uh yeah that's what we're looking for and i think some of these are going to be some flare coyotes so um ones that he caught over there on flares ranch uh, but yeah that's what we're looking at right now we're gonna work on those and like I said I got that coon in the bag there and then after that I've only got about two or three more to do um, doesn't take long the longest part skinning them the rest of it for cats and fox and stuff and canines are it doesn't take much to work them um, that's why I target them I don't like catching raccoons they make a mess of everything so but uh, all right, yeah, we're going to be expecting, uh, let's try to get that 200. If we get 200 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. And it looks like, uh, I think, we're going to come over here to my wood carving section. And I think we're going to try to give away one of these. Those are my best two uh, fish carvings right there. I got that crappie chasing a minnow and a bluegill hanging out underneath the single pole lily pad made out of some uh i mean that fish is all single and it's all made out of the fish itself is made out of red cedar the base and the lily pad the lily pad is made out of white wood walnut that had a little bit of weather and water rot to it real turned out real nice i like the colors and then this is all uh the stem is all oh crab apple and then obviously we got the crappie chasing the minnow up the deer antler. So those are my best. Those are my favorite too. The other ones are in the house. Um, but yeah, we're going to do a giveaway. We're going to give away one of those two fish. Um, but we got to hit that 200 subscribers. And uh, yeah, there's one of my velvet deer I've been doing. Um, I got nowhere else to keep them. So, but yeah so we're gonna get if we can get that 200 subscribers i'll be happy we'll do a video um we'll probably do a live stream and see if we can't give it away <laughs> but uh on the live stream but yeah if you don't follow me on youtube come check me out on facebook um yeah i'm always staying busy with something so always you know you're in a garage too much when you got a tv in there <laughs> but all right guys well that's gonna be it for today um you got questions let me know 
Uh, I try to get all the comments on the YouTube stuff. Sometimes it doesn't tell me I have them. Um, but I usually try to me answer all my messenger stuff. So, um, alrighty. Well, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Take care, guys.